M0 FXB both on DM1701. I'm going to quickly add the Open GD77 firmware to this. I have done it many times. So the first thing I do is there's a file here I've called firmware1701 and above it I've called this file donor file and you'll see why. So in this link that I will call donor file, this one here where the video is and there is an installation video download and go to where it says donor file it says here passionradio.com let's just get it right you're looking for the word donor file so i just saw it now i will say follow the instructions and back up your radio but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to dive in but they're here so follow them so here where it says passion click that click that this zip opens click it you'll get these files appear now get one of them and just you know it depends on the model you've got but mine's the non the non gps model so i just get the top one here and i just drag it into the file that i call donor all the way out and just let go double click make sure it's there so you've got your donor file all all radios that are going to have the open gd77 firmware will need this file once you've done that now you want your actual firmware so if you go to this link at the beginning here it says open dm1701 zip click that again you've got all these files and then in this list here on the left get the english one so there's my one there open dm1701 drag it into the file that i've named you can name it what you like DM1701. So if we look in here, there it is there. So we've got two separate files waiting for us now. Now we need the CPS, the programming software, and of course plug the cable into your PC. There is a driver uh, listed here, but it should install it for you when you load the CPS. I saw the driver listed just in this page. If you go down, it says something like DFU driver. And just if you feel like you need that download it so back to the cps so underneath where it says duck or go it says download the latest cps so we're going to click that and i have already done it and then we're going to go to where is it open gd77 installer cps csv features pdf so i'm going to click this one here download and verified Although we have actually already got this, but we're going to do it. Click more. Run anyway. Go yes. And then just I'm just going to do it and see what it says. Oh, it already exists, so I'm just going to go yes. Create desktop. Launch. So it launches and look here it's where it's installed. Do you see that? It's very brief, but it actually installed the driver. Okay. So now the radio is connected. We haven't programmed the firmware yet, so let's give it a go now. So get all this out of the way. See that installing driver? I'll just minimize that. I won't close it. So now we're going to go program. Remember, you, to do this properly and safely, you should back it up. I never do, but you should. Uh, okay, so we're going to go radio type just check 1701 look tick there then extras firmware loader and we have to load the donor file first so you start off md9600 click select donor and we, we also need to put the radio into firmware mode and we're going to find that one that we put in the file we call donor so desktop donor and there it is there so that's in there and you have to do this or it won't work okay um, but we also need to get our get us into into programming mode or sorry firmware mode so let's just quickly do that so let's turn the radio off press the PTT and the button above and turn on you get that noise and it's now the LED is flashing the screen's gone black then we click the other one select firmware update and with this time we go to the other folder and we're going to choose not donor we're going to choose the one i called firmware where's that gone desktop 
firmware, caught oh, quite a few firmware ones there. 1701, ah, it's not there, let me just find the file. There it is there. Radio not connected or in DFU mode, so let me just work out why it thinks it's not connected. Now I, I should have ticked here, DM1701, and then select the firmware, see if that does it, Raspberry. No, it's still doing it, I'll keep trying. I've got the, the drivers here, so I might as well load them and I will uh, put the link in for you. But they should already be on my PC, really. Anyway, we're going to run it. Uh, there you are, it said it. Well, I'll try, I'll, I'll reboot my PC, see if that helps. Okay, after a bit of faffing, I unplugged the cable, rebooted the PC. Eventually, now, when I right click Device Manager, it now says. Double click universal at the bottom. Don't look in ports. And it actually says STM device in DFU mode. So let's try it again. So we'll go extras, firmware, MD9600. Select donor firmware, which is the MD9600. That's good. So now when we go to 1701 here, then select the new, the correct bin file for OpenGD77, which on the right here you have to, otherwise it doesn't show, you have to go firmware files, legacy, double click bin and now it should go in. There you go. So I don't know what it is, you just have to keep faffing, the dri I'll put the link in for the driver, uh, but just the, the Windows just decides to install a, a, a driver called USB radio. Um, but that's definitely gone in. I can see looking at my radio, it's gone in. I'll show you now. Looking very nice. And the cable's still connected. So in theory, let's do another few bits while we're here. So we're just happy with that. The important one I would say is uh, extras. And I would say call sign database. So we're clicking extras, then call sign mm -hmm. database, then download. We'll chuck that in there. Now, I have had GD77 on this particular radio before. So it takes a minute. Remember, you, this radio does APRS. It satellite tracks even without the fact that, because this is not a GPS model. Letting that go. And then it suddenly populates, and then you go right to radio. I got a feeling I've already done it. See, it says here data record length. So I could lengthen those, you know, characters and it would show more information. And you can see my radio is saying DMRID. Um, look how long it can be. Should we try 30 and see what it does? I haven't changed anything else. So we'll let it do it anyway. So the original CPS, which I've got the radio here right next door, which I'm going to do a little side by side in a minute on, on them. I mean, I like both versions, but GD, GD77 is better. Um, so we've done that. Then we'll do the satellite stuff. So we'll go X, um, close that window. Go extras. Um, Theme editor is to change colours, but I like the blue. But just play with it, you know. It's all common sense stuff. And you can actually read and write on the radio as you do it, and it's you can save a file and send it to your friend, and that you can have that you can have their colour. And there are some pre-files made where you might like the colours. So back to uh, Open GD77 support. Install satellite caps. That's all the latest. Satellite stuff, that only takes a second. Um, what else? Restore flash, backup flash. Backup the MCU, which is definitely recommended. Even does, it even does, look at this, a screen grab. Um, let's give it a name. Look at my keypad. Let's give it a name, otherwise it won't save. Go to downloads save and then when we look at my downloads look at this come on 
Cool. Now I might do a video on that because I don't think I've done a separate video on that. That's a screen grab. Write your voice prompt. You do need to get a, a, a voice prompt from someone. I did download one, but now I've deleted it. So I need to get the voice prompt. So you get it and then you click write and you just select that folder and the radio will start talking to you. Read and write here as well. I don't know what save anyway. So play tune install satellite select boot image so okay and then we can uh read from the radio and that's just going to be reading in the normal way we'll see I've, i'm not sure if i got channels in here so we'll go to contacts yes i have they're all look they're all double dutch so i need to borrow a code plug from my friend line or go to m6 lsj look in the file section i'm sure we've got a a GD77 file there. Another place you can look is here. Open GD77. Go to Files. See if we can find a code plug. Just want one just for, for learning, really. Um, let's have a look. DM1701 file. Here's one. Look. Nashville area. Let's grab it. Fun. Yeah, look, there's a file. Click that. It's gone to my downloads. Then I'll go back to the software and get me out of the way a little bit. Put me up there like so. And just move me over. And then we're going to go file open. Uh, downloads fast forward if I'm being boring downloads there you are let's have a look contacts ooh way better I uh, better put my call sign in so we'll go M0FXB 2341437 so we get the right call sign in there and then we can talk don't forget we can tweak this you know I just want to show it and you've got you can change the boot screen to a photograph I think band limits DTMF settings the main one I think will be your settings so where is it look even got APRS configuration there which we haven't done I don't I have I may have done it in a different video settings boot DMR ID call sign band limits DTMF contacts VFO A and B so I could just put in there when it's in VFO mode, I could put in my hubnet node 434.550 uh, analog and yeah, same TX and can we do tone is analog. Uh, I can't see one right now, but you probably can. And so close that down. Um, I mean, that's enough. I mean, it was about the install. You can see all the different settings, language. I'll find some voice prompts as well, and we'll do a video on that. Bye for now, 73.